G'day everyone, Crip Aussie here. I hope you're all well in whatever part of the world you're watching this video. Well, yes, I'm back. Um, I had a lot of family stuff to take care of. Um, and also, I thought it was probably time to uh, break the chain with a few things as well um, that were happening on the internet as regards to myself. And, you know, just the usual stuff, just the shitheads. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I just think that I just thought it was time to break the chain, more or less. Um, since we've you've last heard from me, I've actually, uh, I'm not living in Perth anymore, in Western Australia. I've actually travelled across Australia and have taken up residence in Queensland. Um, many reasons for that. Uh, mostly personal, but it was just time for a move, and I took the opportunity to drive across Australia. Um, I have some some fantastic pictures to show you all uh, out in the middle of nowhere, um, which is exactly where we drove in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, we flew places where the crows fly backwards to keep the dust out of their eyes. Um, but I won't show you the, any of those pictures today. Um, since I've started the channel again, um, I've got in touch with everybody. Uh, and, you know, there's many things that are happening at the moment. <clears throat> Let's start with a bit of finance. Um, as I've been saying for ages, you know, the, the PM is now telling everyone as well, there's only one way that interest rates can go, folks, and that is up. Now, don't you think it's kind of odd that the Prime Minister of Australia comes out and says, you know, listen, guys, interest rates are going to go up. Sorry, just having my morning coffee. Now, why would he do that? I'll tell you why he's going to do why he is doing that. Is because these lying, scheming for want of a better term, shitbags, know exactly what's going to happen. It's exactly what everybody who's in finance knows is going to happen. The system's going to break down. And what's going to happen with interest rates? Interest rates are going to start going up in a big way. Have you seen the Australian dollar recently? It's skyrocketing. It's actually crushing Australia again. So what are they going to do? They're going to have to put up interest rates. So... Look, I don't think there's any way out of this anyway, but probably the best thing you could do is fix your mortgage in the near-term future. You know, it even says here, at the, at the moment when an Australian politician or policymaker refers to asset prices, there's only one market they're generally thinking of, real estate. And if you know anything about real estate in Australia at the moment, it's tanking. Melbourne's tanking, Sydney's tanking, Brisbane's tanking. Uh, I, I just saw a report last night where Brisbane um, real estate, uh, especially apartments, etc., is down 10% in a month. You know, don't listen to the mainstream media mockingbird crap. It is dire out there, folks. Dire. That's not me being a doomsayer or anything else, but as much as they want to give you good advice, you know, tell you everything's rosy, it's not. It's one of the reasons why I left Perth. The actual Perth unemployment rate at the moment is something like 12 to 15%, not the six or seven that they're saying it is. It's dire, absolutely dire. Um, so, look, He's done this so he he can turn around later and say, well, I did warn you. Because these guys know what's coming. This, this shitbag here, he's a Goldman Sachs man. Do you all realise that? He is a big time Gold, Goldman Sachs man. That's why he got put into power over Tony Abbott. If you're shocked by that, look it up. It's true. 
Okay, let's move on. Sorry, go to this one. This is a video, a spectacular video by Becky Lewis. Now, poor old Becky's been hammered by every single person uh, on the planet, just about, about this being a fire, a plane, uh, I don't know, some kids waving stick, fire sticks around. Look, I went through this whole video and I did an analysis of it. And I'll put it to you this way. It doesn't change. In the whole 38 minutes, it doesn't really change. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you it's not a fire. It also, look at the elevation. She's pointing up, not pointing down. Slightly up, I will admit, but not down. And you can even tell that just by looking at this. So if this was a fire, wouldn't common sense tell you that at some time during the fire, 40 minutes, 40 minutes is a long time for a fire, folks, or a campfire or whatever. If it was a campfire, it would have to go down, start to extinguish, would it not? So why is it that this lasts for 40 minutes and doesn't change the whole 40 minutes? Well, either Becky's a fantastic person at doing a loop while she can talk over it. it look, the reality is this is 100% this is real. And I can prove it. So let's go to and here is Becky's here's the still shots from Becky's picture. Now look, I can literally pick any single one of these. Let's go this one. When it decides to open. And go to the next one. That's the next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Look. It doesn't change. It literally does not change. So let's pick this one. Let's just pick any one. And let's do the test together so everybody can see it. Okay, folks, well, I changed it because it was that was a crappy one. But look, I'm doing it this, I'm, I'm actually doing this higher so you guys can see it, which makes it kind of harder for me. But anyway, you'll get the gist. Okay, so let's go to invert. Okay, one, that's a that's a massive object there. And there's one, two, three, four, five here. Okay. They're still there. Look, you can even see them better. Let's go the opposite way. Definitely there, folks. 100% definitely there. And it, no, it's not a fire. Okay, well, why am I showing you this anyway? Well, I only need to show you one picture from this. Look at this. This is going backwards on gamma. If you take it down, I should still be able to see it, and I can. If I take it up, I should still be able to see it, and I can. Clean it up a bit. That looks about right, doesn't it? 
a little bit more. There we go. Brightness and contrast. Look, you can clearly see that there's objects with this. Are they planets? I don't know. Are they meteors? No. Are they comets? No. So I guess that leaves us with a couple of options. One, it's debris, or two, it's planets. And this thing has a large body of things with it, very large. But as per usual, let's just go through the process here. Still don't think they're planets? You're kidding yourself. I can take it all the way up to brightness. There you go. Look at that one there, for example. Clearly see that. Now, to all the people who are saying I'm manipulating photos, <clears throat> uh, Am I doing a manipulation? Yes, I am. Am I manipulating the photo? Mm, not really. Um, because what I'm actually doing, if you notice, is just changing the color, i.e. the hue, to either, you know, just through the color spectrum of the ra rainbow, really. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, is if you know anything about, anything about, um, sound waves, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can find things or look at things. There you go, Becky. If everyone wants to send this to Becky, you can clearly see that she's found something and something massive. My point here about the sound, uh, sound, light, and color spectrums is that things change in all of them. Look at the size of this thing, folks. That is huge, isn't it? Look. Look at the size of this thing. This, this one here is massive. You can actually see the full size of these when you bring it up a bit. So as regards to manipulation, the only thing I'm doing, and I want to clarify this, I'm not changing the picture, I'm just changing the shading of the color around the picture. That's really important, okay? Okay, so like I said, I don't actually have to change, show you 20 dozen of these because they're all the same. In 40 minutes, the whole thing doesn't really change. Isn't that odd, don't you think? Look, you can clearly see that is a massive planet there. And it's got a massive tail. Look. Okay, well look, that, that does it with Becky's. And like I said, I could actually take it to, let me, let me show you. Any image you want, it doesn't really change. There you go. They're still the same. The only thing I did notice was that times these these ones here were a little bit less prominent than before. Why? I don't know. But look, this is back. This is timeline further along, and they're still there. Okay, you probably can't see that at your end. Let me get it up a bit. There you go. You can see them. You can even see them now. You know, look, clearly see them. <clears throat> okay, well, that's Becky's stuff done. Just hang on a sec.
Hello folks. This is a video from Neil Oakley. If you don't watch Neil's stuff, you should. It's a very short video, 1 minute 58. I'm going to play it and you guys can watch it. And then I'm going to show you the tests. This is probably one of the best videos done recently. This is done in the UK, in England. Okay, folks, well, these are the tests I'm going to show you from that video. This is inverted. You can see the time, 1 minute 25. If you want to go through it yourself and check it out, you can do. Look at this. It's clearly there. And these, they're clearly there. You'd have to be blind Freddy not to be able to see that. If you can't see that, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> and no, it's not a cloud. That's the cloud. This thing moves through the cloud. Well, it actually moves through the chemtrails, to be honest. As I said, you can clearly see it. You can clearly see the cluster of planets here. And I can prove that this is correct because I've actually got pictures of this when I was coming across Australia. And you could clearly see them with your with the visual eye out in the outback. No two ways about it. And the more I look at it, the more I think that this is something up here as well. Because you can clearly see the shape of it. Anyone want to make a call on that being a cloud? Good luck. Yeah, you can do it if you want. It's up to you at the end of the day. This is another interesting bit of the video. Towards the end of the video, you can actually see this planet comes out of nowhere. 
and it's definitely there and this one here and if you look down here you can clearly see this object and these ones over here look This one was a bird. And look, you can clearly see that object. And look down here. Folks, those times when we were wondering if things were here or not, well, we've run out of that time. Clearly there, folks. Clearly there. can clearly see the edge of it as it's, this is either it's either going past or it's going down one of the two okay let me stop the video there and I'll show you something else that Neil found okay <clears throat> this is a picture that Neil sent me now as I said Neil's in Liverpool UK now as you can see this is a bit of a, a a weird picture for a start because the sun's an oblong, not round. Um, and without me even doing anything, you can obviously see that there's something here and here. Okay? And over here. So let me go through it now and you'll see. This is inverted. Look, this is 100% real, folks, 100%. Neil took this with his own camera. Value inverted. I said to Neil, this must be the first ever picture taken of Nibiru from the ground. This is inverted and value inverted. Clearly see it, clearly there. It's not a myth, it's not in my imagination. And this is the gamma test. Clearly see it, it's clearly there. And the others as well. And what I've written here is I've taken this right down and I could have taken it right down to, to nothing and they were still there. But if you take it down too far, actually, you can't see it because of the pixelation. So I've left it as it is like that. These are the different hue tests. So it's just a color test, changing the color spectrum just to see what highlights what. And you can clearly see the planets there. Interesting to note, I didn't notice that before. Let's go back one. Bloody hell, I didn't notice that. The cloud. Yeah, it's a cloud, I think. Doesn't matter. I didn't notice this bit here before. This is just a different color test. It hasn't changed. And I didn't change it. And this is the image blowing up. <coughs> Fantastic picture. Really good picture. Okay, I'll stop it there. Back in a sec. Okay, this is a uh, video from Pete WDHCO, as you can see here. Um, look, 
basically we don't uh, when I say we that's uh, the royal we as in the Nibiru group that we have going we don't really watch any more videos in regards to Nibiru unless it's done by Peter sure we watch seven Neil um, we only watch the people that actually give us some credible information um, and I can tell you after I've had a time off I came to the conclusion that there's no point watching very many other channels um, because they're not showing real true information um, I love watching seven stuff I love watching Neil stuff and I love watching Peter stuff um, and Scott from the Bury Planet he does some good stuff as well with a physicist um, and they're getting some really good stuff out um, but look, I don't honestly. I don't really know much any other channels that I would watch. If you want to watch some good, interesting scientific stuff, probably the best person is a High Truth channel. Um, apart from that, folks, don't waste your time. Um, watch Pete's stuff because Pete's actually getting sent stuff now <clears throat> from around the world. That's really interesting. Well, what I wanted to what to show you is this this image here, right? This is important because I've actually um, found something else last night that backs this up. Now, when the sun does a, a CME flare, you get what's called, I believe it's called prominence, uh, where a gaseous cloud comes out the side of the, of the actual sun. Um, there's a gentleman called Robert Longford. Sorry, hang on a sec. Okay, this is the gentleman here that I was talking about. Um, he does some really good stuff, actually. His name's Robert Lockwood. Um, and the reason why I like him is because he actually takes a piss out of a lot of us um, in regards to whether we're right or wrong. I don't know. Uh, Strop has some uh, knowledge of the man, and they communicate, but I haven't actually spoken to him as yet. Um, but this video is actually wor well worth watching, and I'll show you this little bit here. It says, when prominences, prominences are that extended and height above the limb, it is usually a sign that they're about to erupt. Um, but let me take it back just a sec, just a fraction. This is what he means. See that big gaseous ball there? And you see this? You, you can see this happens quite a lot in the sun. And he's pointing out that, you know, these do exist. And he tells you the whole reason why they exist. Okay, this is important. Notice how it, it's like a, a tornado whirlwind type of effect, I guess, and it comes up. Now, if you want to find out about these, watch this video. It's only two minutes long, I think. Yeah, it's a really good video, though. Okay, one second. Okay, this is Pete's video. Now, just watch this, this side of the sun here. I'm going to put it on full screen so you can see it. Just watch this bit here. What's the first CME? Now what's the size of the second one? <clears throat> now the interesting thing for me was I picked up this all the time in trees and the flash really blew up. Let me show it to you now. And before anyone says anything, no, it's not prominence. God's sake. Um here we go. Now this is when the, the flare really blew up. What well, this was a massive CME flare. You can see it highlights all the planets around it. Can you see that? Now this caused some discussion in our group. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And it was only after I looked at it a couple of times, after I'd done the testing and that, that I realized something crucial about this. And that's the fact that if you notice, it actually goes over the arc of the camera arm. See, so it's actually over it. You can see where it comes through, see? It goes through there. So this is actually on this side of it, not your other side of it. That's what I was trying to highlight. And you can clearly see that there. Look, it's actually, it's actually on this side of it. And that clearly shows it there. You can clearly see that the line goes through and down. So whatever this is, and by the way, it's absolutely massive, it is not, it's just been highlighted because of the actual huge CME that happened. And there you go. Now the other thing that, it, that changing the color spectrum will obviously show you different objects in the different color spectrums. Can you see these? There's seven objects there. Two up here, one there, one there, another one here. It's hard for me to see when I do this. Another one up here. But now you can clearly see that that line goes through there. So this is actually, a quarter of this is actually sitting on here. But did you notice that this side of it is black as well? Interesting, eh? And this is virtually black, you know, it's a darker color. But look, you can clearly see these other planets, objects. Look. There you go, they're all there. Okay, back in a sec. Okay. Now this is uh, Scott from Planet X News and he's talking with his physicist. Um, and they're describing this planet here. Now the interesting thing about this video is that this video was taken on the 12th, the 14th of the 12th, 2001. Now, God knows what this is. I haven't got a clue, I couldn't tell you. But you can clearly see that the sun is behind it. This is a good pickup by Scott, actually. But what interested me the most, just watch this, is over here. I was just going through some, I guess, different, uh, I don't know exactly what these really are. I mean, I stumbled onto this. I mean, this is from 2001, December 14th. And the hours are right down here in the corner. They are. I'm just fast forwarding it a bit. You can clearly see that there is something here. You can clearly see it. It doesn't go away. The whole the whole video doesn't go away. So I thought, well, that's kind of odd. So I tested it last night. And here are the tests, folks. Now, this is inverted. Now, you can clearly see that this object is there. You know, there's no two ways about it. Now, isn't that odd? Because I just showed you where the other one was. It's amazing, actually. From 2001.
And this is just cleaning the image up a little bit so that it's actually, um, you know, you, so that you can see these images. And what, what is of notice is that there's actually a couple of other planets that are highlighted here. So my wildest guess is that these are behind the sun at that time. But there's no two ways about it. They're definitely there. So it's a good pickup by Scott, actually. Look, you can clearly see it's there, folks. It's not our imagination. Okay, folks, well, that's it from me for today. Um, I will try to get another video out this week uh, in regards to all the stuff that I found when I was traveling across Australia. So until next time, let's finish off on the Lord's Prayer. For you people who don't want to say the Lord's Prayer, turn off now or turn the volume down. Whatever you want to do, I don't care because we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. I'm not religious, but I just think this is a great way to finish and bring people together. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, folks. Well, that's it. Um, until next time, we'll see you then. Prep out.